How to create an overlay for Sparkboot. This is an example of how to create an overlay for Sparkboot use covering up a photo. Understand that there are three different types of photos, whether it be a square photo, a rectangle or wide, or a portrait, which is up and down. Okay, I'm going to show you an example of how to create one with wide, and then I'll explain later how to how to make one for make one for square or make one for portrait. So first thing you need to do is you need to open a program like Paint, simple old Paint. It's on every PC computer and probably on every Mac. You need to make a background image that is at least 1200 by 800. The size would be 1200 by 800. It's not a full layout size, but it can be stretched and reduced, but 1200 by 800. 1200 by 800 size, if I got this pretty close here, that, let me go up one, I'm trying to adjust it here, we'll say that this is 1200 by 800, and I'm going to, uh, we're going to use this. Once I have the background to the size, in this case 1200 by 800, I'm going to, I'm going to create a circle overlay. And up here in Paint, there's create a circle, and you can draw a circle. You would want to make this circle so that it is exactly from the top. If you can notice cl very closely here, there's a little teeny point right there. That point should be right at 600 because that is where the uh, center of the layout is at the top and then go all the way down to the bottom with it, right down to the bottom edge where it's right there at the bottom. In fact, I think it needs to be moved over one pixel. Perfect. Now, we need to make sure it's the same width. Okay, in order to do that, right now it's the width of this is only uh, 795 by, 7, by 774. The numbers are way down here at the bottom. You can't see on the screen, but I'm going to widen this up so that it's 795, in fact, right to the 200, and take this right out to the 1200. We'll make it right at the 800 mark. Okay, so if I were to take this and stretch it down just a, one t tab further, oh, grabbing the wrong spot here. Okay, so now that's perfectly centered and it is a perfect circle. All right, next thing I will do is save this and I'm going to save it as a PNG file because we're going to make some part of it transparent. I'm going to save it and I'm going to name it circle, circle overlay, W for wide, and I'm going to save that. Okay, now that I've saved that, I can close up Paint. Now, on my desktop with the hundreds of different things that I've got going on helping people all the time, I'm going to reopen that image where I saved it, Circle Overlay right here. I'm going to reopen it in another program called Paint.net. Get it online. I believe it's free. If, if it costs anything, it's, le it's less than 29 bucks, I'm sure. Okay, I'm going to right-click on it open with paint.net. The reason I'm opening it with paint.net is in paint.net I have the ability to make something transparent by just clicking on a little magic wand up here and I want this to be transparent. This is going to be the window where you're going to see. So when I click inside this window that turns to a blue color. Okay? And I'm going to make it 100% transparent. Okay. Once it turns it blue, I'm going to click delete, delete, and as soon as I click delete, you see the checkerboard. The checkerboard is telling you that is transparent. Now I'm going to save this image as it's called before. 
same place on my desktop up here file and click save it will pop up down here at the bottom of in paint to okay in the bottom right out out of this window area but it'll say okay now I've saved it now I have opened up Win, uh, uh, spark booth 6 and I've created a new layout I'm doing a landscape layout wide screen layout okay so that we can show the widescreen photo boxes. I'm just going to grab a couple photo boxes, put one here, make another one over here, like so, and make it a little bigger so it'll be a different size. And then I'll add a third photo box right here. And this one here, I'm going to make it about a third the size. So we can see there's three different size photo boxes, but I want to put an overlay over the top of each one of those. Note that I have not changed the color of the background or anything. All I do is make three photo boxes. I'm going to bring in that overlay and put it on number one to start with. We'll click on add an image file. Okay. This is not adding it on the right hand side as an overlay. This is adding it as an image file. And it's right here. And when I bring it in, it's going to be almost as big as my whole screen because I made a pretty good size so it would cover it. So even if I did have a full single photo and I wanted to put this box on it, I could make it full screen by making it bigger or smaller. Now I'm going to take this box and I'm going to put it right over the top so that I don't see any of the edges. And I just want to try to get it as close to being perfect as possible. I can zoom in, but you can see it is now covering that. And now, actually, I got to go up one more notch. Okay, perfectly covers it. So all it's seen there is the little circle. So if I did, if I went in to do a, a session right now, you'll see. I'm going to show you an example of what a photo would look like in that circle. It would be here. Here's the same photos in the other photo boxes. But yet, this one here has only the circle showing. All right? Okay, so if I added another same image from the desktop, right here, click on it, brings it in. Or what I could have done, I'm going to delete this. What I could have done is just clicked on the image over here and hit copy, because you can copy this. And that's control C and then control V and paste it. So you have another one. If they were all the same size, that'd be the easy way to do it. But since they're not all the same size, I'm going to copy that one, put it here. And I think I need to come down a notch. Maybe two. Yep. Now I'm going to control and V and paste it again. Grab this one here and place it right here. Get it as close as I possibly can to it and try to make it bigger move it over to the left and i'm just using the arrow keys to move it left and right until i see the green disappear or the lines disappear it needs to be a notch bigger take it down one uh, let me take it a little higher over here and move it up and move it to the left Okay, so right now if I preview it here in the photo box, you'll see all three of those photos, three different sizes, now has an overlay. Okay? Now, if I had a background color or a background image, it's a lot more difficult. Okay? If you're dealing with one solid color, that's not a problem. Because if the background were a different color, let's say it was this blue, you would, instead of it, <coughs> instead of creating <coughs> your overlay with white outside of the circle, you'd make it the exact same color as the background color you're going to use in your layout. Okay? If you were using a background image, though, it's a lot more difficult because you have to have the exact area of where that photo box is or it's going to be noticed. That's up to you. But that's how you make an overlay in SparkBooth.
let me go back and show you how to make a square one or a different band circle one so that you can see more than just a circle can be done okay now I am back in paint okay and in paint I'm going to create a square and then I will explain how a portrait can be used from the other ones okay uh, a square would be exactly square right now it's 800 tall so I would just grab this side over here and resize in paint turn off maintain aspect ratio and put it on pixels and change the 1200 here to 800 and make sure that the one right below it is also 800 so they're both 800 and then click OK so now I've got a perfectly square photo box if by chance I didn't want to use a circle okay I don't want to use a circle I want to use a star you could do use a star you would grab the star and make it fit so that this is directly to the top right up to the top edge and this goes to the bottom and you would go put it, putting it pretty much corner to corner edge to edge whether it be a star a circle a, a diamond let's see if I can actually change it here to a diamond one and let me undo the one I just did and you could do that shape delete that you can do any shape that is available in paint here's a heart you could even do a nice big heart that you could use as a as an overlay and it's same thing applies you just make sure it's edge to edge on the sides because this one's perfectly square okay and the top two shoulders of the heart need to go up to the top and the bottom one comes right down to the bottom and then you would click save as it's saving as a PNG file because I'm going to make it transparent heart hit save saves to my desktop I'm going to close this open up the heart open with paint.net and in paint.net I just click on the little magic wand over here and click inside the center of the heart and hit delete once you hit delete it will delete the inside of that heart so that you you actually can delete it and you'll see the uh, you'll see the checkerboard that's saying that it's it's deleted it's transparent then you go to file and you go to save okay in the bottom right okay and then out on your desktop you will see that the heart is now transparent now as I was saying for portrait you would basically need to create a portrait style instead of it being 1200 wide and 800 tall you would make it 800 wide and 1200 tall and the same thing applies to making the circle in the center the same a perfect circle edge to edge on the the, the skinny part okay not from top to bottom because you're gonna have an oval but if you wanted to have an oval you could do that turn it into an oval same with the heart if you just wanted a little heart in the middle of the window put the little heart in the middle of the window okay heart diamond square whatever just be aware that the people are not going to be able to know there is an overlay unless you actually add that same overlay to screen overlays in the software I'll show you where that's at in order for the guest user to know there is a circle going to be over the top of them they would need to know that on screen when they're taking the picture the same as doing I do for buttons I have a circle that covers up everything and all they see is the hole that they need to be in and you'd need to be in screen overlays and inside screen overlays you'd need to create a new one and we're gonna call this one over overlay 444 only because I, I, I just put in over la okay I'm gonna click OK I'm gonna call it over la and now it's looking for what I'm going to use as my overlay and my overlay is this circle right here so I'm going to put that there and that's the overlay now right now it's disabled I want it to be enabled for all 
because I'm going to use the same overlay on all the photos. If you were only using it on photo one, photo two, you would select it and you'd add one for the ones you have it and ones you're not. I'm going to use it on all. I don't want it mirrored and I don't want it applied to the photo. Okay, because that's done inside of the layout edit itself. Okay, so I'm going to hit close here. So now I've got the overlay turned on. So when I do a session, and I'm going to do one real quick. See, there's that overlay that shows you where I'm going to be. I can be at. If I'm too far over here, I'm not going to be in the center of that. Hopefully that explains as enough as you need to know. If you don't, just give us a yell at the Spark Booth website in the help section, and I'll see if I can help you out, or we can do a Skype. Talk to you then. Thank you.